Hey, what's going on everyone? Eric Rossi, the guy with the eye here to wrap up 2015 in a good sense and tell you some of the top things of 2015 gear, photography, videography, and actually mention some of the worst things. So it'd be cool to see what you guys and girls have to say as we go through the list down below. But here we go. What are some of the top things from 2015 and what are some things that were pretty poor from 2015 as well? Let's take a dive into it. Starting off with some of the best things has to be one of the, one of the things I've been uh, wearing for the past couple months and it's just something that's been awesome because it's kept me hyper aware about more of my health. I'm really trying to take care of myself better because of other things that have happened in my life and I'm really trying to be more hyper aware to things and that would definitely be the, uh, the Fitbit charge. I have the charge right here. There's a smaller one where it's just the Fitbit and the Fitbit HR. There's a couple of them out there, but the Fitbit is great because it's a Bluetooth device, uh, a smart device that syncs with your iOS, Android, whatever your smartphone is, and you can track a lot of things. You know, you can keep track of the time. You can say how many steps you've taken, even though it's mostly accurate, semi-inaccurate at times, but it gives you a good gist. It tells you how many miles you've walked, active time and everything like that. It is just great because it really just helps you keep track of certain things and it forces me, as I said, to be more hyper aware of what I'm doing throughout the day. But the Fitbit is pretty much one of the most popular things of 2015 anyway. Just look at like Black Friday holiday sales. You saw that they dropped 40 bucks and have been selling like crazy. So the Fitbit has been something really huge in 2015. Another thing I'm just gonna add in real quick as well is the Sony A6000, one of the biggest things for myself. I know it didn't come out in 2015, but on the list, this is just really stuck out to me and I know I've mentioned this a lot is because it's been a fantastic camera Sony a6000 look into it if you're looking to get into photography if anything as a gift if not just do it so kind of bouncing off the 6000 it has been the year of Sony and why I bring that up is because uh, a lot of photographers out there have been switching but they don't like the lens selections for Sony cameras. I'm still mainly a Nikon shooter for my professional stuff, but the problem is there's really no great connectivity for Sony cameras with Nikon gear. But Metabones put out a uh, an, an adapter that works with Canon lenses that you get autofocusing on all the metadata and electronics that work as well. So that Canon Metabone adapter to Sony has been a really hot seller for a lot of people in the market, and Jason Lanier has been great in providing that information to a lot of people. That's one thing that has really been hot and Sony needed to get a, another boost in their sales because their lens selection is muy pequeño. I bring this up as well because it's not a thousand dollars and it's a little underneath and it's the DJI uh, like Phantom 3 line of things, especially the standard that I have. It's a definitely a drone Fitbit headphone. I have something to touch upon that year, 2015. A lot of things are really coming to that. So the DJI Phantom 3 standard, advanced, professional, those are some really things that really popped off this year and have been selling like crazy. And especially the DJI Ronin, for, it's like, you know, basically a steady cam, a fly cam for your DSLR or mirrorless type of system, all depending if you know how to weight it right. It's a very strong piece of equipment that's under 2000, if not $1,500. And two major cameras came out as well. It's the Sony A7R Mark II, A7S Mark II. You know, all those Mark IIs came out. They're really, really popular. Popular. Even Lens Rentals had a thing where that is one of the most rented cameras of 2015. Another one would be the Canon 5DS and the 5DSR, that 50 huge megapixel sensor that they have. Two of the biggest cameras to come out, two of the most popular, and it's because of that high megapixel, 42 megapixel, 50 megapixel mark that people really are loving that for studio type work. And if anything, for the Sony side of things, the 4K video. It might not be top of the top of the top of the list for 2015, but the Sony MDR uh, headphones are really strong. They're under $120, if not a little less. Tangle free cord, extremely noise blocking, like I can hardly hear myself talking type of thing. Um, these are great headphones to have. They're very portable as well. And you know, aluminum finish, it just really is sexy. It's sleek, it's nice, but they're really wrong, really straight. And I'm not a huge headphone user as I'm getting into more of the tech. I've been a little bit more interested, but these are some of the ones that have stuck out uh, to me as well. The full name product and uh, product name will be down in the description below for these Sony mic uh, headphones. It's also been the year of the smartphone. One of the most selling uh, smartphones of all time is the iPhone 6S. It is, it's true, it's the fact. 
Uh, they put 4K video in this thing, up the uh, megapixels for the camera, and it is a strong piece of equipment. But also the LG4, the LG G4, whatever, however that goes, has also been a strong piece of equipment because they've also improved the camera in that as well. And that has been another camera uh, or another phone system, uh, Android side of things that people have gone to on the photography, video uh, videography side of things because that was also a strong camera in that little sensor that they put in that as well. iPhone 6S, the LG G4, Pretty strong. So with the exception of that is a lot of stuff that I've used and really got into and a lot of the top tech for me that came out this year. But also just a couple other things like the Canon C300 Mark II was a really big seller. The Sony F5, if you really want a camcorder ENG type style camera that took uh, Sony and Canon lenses as well with you know some adapters and things. But those are two of the probably biggest video camcorders out there as well that really should get some recognition for what they have. Now you're gonna ask me, well, those are some of the best stuff. Well, what's the worst? Let me double it up right here and let me start with what I believe even though uh, a lot of people, it's a, it's a split decision, but the Canon XC10. Now, I was really debating getting this, and when I made a reaction video, I thought it was really kind of cool, but in playing with it for a little short while, I had it for a couple days, I wasn't able to do a test review of it. I just didn't like it. The form factor kind of sucked, and the fact that, you know, the, the handle on the side is, you know, maneuverable, which is kind of cool, it never locked in place. The video wasn't that great from it. It was very soft. For the most part, especially if you're using like a low type of aperture, I just didn't like it. I was a fan of it. I know other photography channels out there have really liked it or have really hated it as well. But you know, coming out in 2015 and at the price tag, it's kind of BS as well. Uh, it just wasn't a favorite of mine, and I. Just gonna throw it up there as one of the worst as well. Now me being a Nikon guy, I do own a 24 to 70, but one of the worst is one of the 24, the newest 24 to 70 2.8 VR. The price is absolutely crap. It's heavy. Weird diameter up front if you want to use filters. And I'm going off of because of that. And I'm also going to include the Neewer Carbon Fiber Tripod. Absolutely a POS to me. Two attempts, I made a video about that. I'll link that down in the description below. But the Neewer 66 inch Carbon Fiber Tripod, oof, was it bad, man. I don't have to say much about this, but the DX01 for your smart device. Ugh. Now if you hear the name Leica, you know that it is a very expensive product. But the Leica SL, I played with this at Photo Plus. And once again, I'll leave the, uh, the link down in the description below for that quick review and the hands-on that I had with it. It is very expensive, very bulky, only like two lenses work with it right now. No. And anything lens maybe related. So that's it. That rounds out 2015. Some of the top tech for myself and some of most of the stuff that actually came out in 2015 and some of the worst stuff that came out as well. Please let me know some of your best and worst of 2015 or just some things that you bought in 2015. Let me know down in the comments below. It'd be really great to see what you guys and girls have also hated or liked throughout the entire year from this year or things that you bought this year. Thank you so much for watching. Eric Rossi, the guy with the eye. Keep an eye out.